among them have almost described the situation as inevitably leading to war. I don't want to ask you if you think it's inevitable. What I do want to ask you is, as President of the United States, would you tolerate a nuclearized North Korea that is contained and deterred but still nuclear? Or would it have to abandon nuclear weapons? And would military action on the part of the United States be one of the options necessary to achieve that goal? Military action would certainly be an option. Is it inevitable? Nothing's inevitable. Uh, it would be great if something else could be worked out. Uh, we would have to look at all of the details, all of the facts. But uh, we've had presidents for 25 years now. They've been talking, talking, talking. And the day after an agreement is reached, uh, new work begins in North Korea, continuation on nuclear. So uh, I would prefer not going the route of the military, but it's something certainly that could happen. Our military has never been stronger. We are in a position now, and you know the new orders. You see the numbers just like I see the new numbers. It's been uh, tens of billions of dollars more in investment. And each day, new equipment is delivered, new and beautiful equipment, the best in the world, the best anywhere in the world, by far. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to have to use it on North Korea. If we do use it on North Korea, it will be a very sad day for North Korea. Do you have a question for the Amir? Follow-up. Is it, is it acceptable for you, as President, for North Korea to be nuclearized but contained and deterred? Is that a strategy We're going to see what it is. I don't negotiate like with you. No, I'm not negotiating with you. Maybe we'll have a chance to negotiate with somebody else, but uh, I don't put my negotiations on the table, unlike past administrations. I don't talk about them. But I can tell you that North Korea is behaving badly, and it's got to stop. Okay. A question for the Emir. Your Excellency, you mentioned in a general sense the situation with Qatar. How optimistic are you about it being resolved, and what role would you like the President of the United States to play in achieving a resolution? We hope, we still have hope, that the dispute would be resolved between Qatar and its uh, um, neighborly countries in the GCC, especially th that are, are friends in the U.S. and our other friends are assisting us in resolving this issue. I am optimistic that the solution will come in, any, in a very near future, God willing. Question for the, yes, for the Emir first, yes. Uh, my question is for you, Mr. President, first. Kuwait News Agency, Kuwait Shirut uh, Sadiqi. Do you support the uh, Kuwaiti mediation role between Qatar and the four countries, and do you support the holding of a conference that will include all parties in Kuwait? Thank you. Well, I do appreciate and respect the mediation. I would be willing to be the mediator. I was telling the Emir before that if I can help between UAE and Saudi Arabia, where I have a very great relationship. I spoke with the King yesterday, King Solomon, who's a friend of mine, and we spoke on unrelated subjects, but we had a long conversation. If I can help mediate between Qatar and, in particular, the UAE and Saudi Arabia, I would be willing to do so. And I think you'd have a deal worked out very quickly. I think it's something that's going to get solved fairly easily. Uh, Kuwait has been really the leader of getting it solved, and we appreciate that very much. But I do believe that we'll solve it. If we don't solve it, I will be a mediator right here in the White House. We'll come together very quickly. I think we'll have something solved. Ahmed Maki. Ahmed Maki. Sayyidi Hadrat um, uh, you, Mr. Amir, in light of the regional conditions in the region, has there been an assertion on the role of the U.S. commitment to the security of the state of Kuwait? Thank you. Thank you. And you have heard now what uh, His Excellency the President has said about the relations um, between Kuwait and the U.S. and its assertion of its commitment to the security of Kuwait 
and this is not something new. And uh, don't forget that the United States has managed with its other uh, coal allies. When Kuwait was uh, occupied, it liberated Kuwait from Iraq within a few months. And this is something that the Kuwaiti people remember very well, and everybody also. And we here thank the United States and the American people for that. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Nadia Belbisi with Al Arabiya Television. Um, you dispatches a team uh, to Israel and Palestine, and you are about to meet the leaders of both countries in the UN soon. Uh, do, uh, do we expect a new American uh, initiative to move the process forward? And if I may, sir, um, the UN has just published a report about Syria's um, Assad regime using chemical weapons. They said that basically use it more than dozens, uh, two, two dozen times. Does that mean that President Assad is immune now from any prosecution? And what can you do to stop the further use of chemical weapons? Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis, we are discussing, we are working. Uh, they say it is the world's most complex and difficult deal. You know that. Uh, but uh, it is something that could happen. I believe that uh, the relationships that we have with both can help. It's a — it's a uh, — an event that's just never taken place. Sometimes people think they're close and it never happens, or it never happens successfully. I think we have a chance of doing it. I think the Palestinians would like to see it happen. I think the Israelis would like to see it happen. And usually when you have two groups that would like to see something happen, good things can happen. So uh, I think there is a chance that uh, there could be peace. But again, I say that a little bit reluctantly. We're going to give it our best. We have tremendous talent working on that particular transaction. As you know, David Friedman, the ambassador, is very much involved. We have a great group of people. Uh, we'll see what happens. As far as the chemical weapons, I find it hard to believe that after what we did the last time, that Assad would do that again. I haven't heard what you just said, but I find that a little bit difficult to believe. But nothing would change. We would be extremely upset if he was using chemical weapons. As far as Syria is concerned, we have very little to do with Syria other than killing ISIS. What we do is we kill ISIS. And we have succeeded in that respect. We have done better in eight months of my presidency than the previous eight years against ISIS. So ISIS is rapidly disappearing, as you know. And that's because of our great military. The military has been absolutely incredible in terms of what they've done with ISIS in Iraq and in Syria. Do you have a question for the Emir? Samul Amir. Yes, um, Mr. Um, to the Amir, all the parties are holding on to their own positions with respect to Qatar. Where do you see a breakthrough in this dispute? Do you see any indications to make us believe that this um, crisis will come to an end? The hope uh, has, no, has not ended yet. I would like to affirm that Qatar is ready to meet all the demands that were put, the 13 demands that were presented, and is ready to sit at the table to negotiate and to discuss with us all everything related to the dispute between the parties the Gulf parties. As you know, we have 13 uh, demands that were presented. And we know th that not all of these 13 demands are acceptable. But if we were to sit down together and discuss 
these 13 demons, and we have indeed accepted them, and Qatar has accepted them, we would be able to resolve all 13 demands, all the issues and points that harm and relate to the dispute between the countries of the region and anything that harms the interest of our other friends. Thank you. Again, because of the fact that there has been massive funding of terrorism by certain countries. And what I want is I want to stop the funding of terrorism. And we're going to stop the funding of terrorism. And if they don't stop the funding of terrorism, I don't want them to come together. But I think they will. Okay? Uh, you have a question? Your people have a question, yes. Go ahead, to the Emir. Sumo Emir. Your Highness, I'm Saeed Saeed from Al Jazeera. Mr. President, we, uh, we talk about uh, Kuwaiti mediation and supporting Kuwaiti images. Are the tracks and the meeting that happened in Kuwait, uh, which received um, U.S. and international support, is there in reality something clear and a breakthrough that has been accomplished in this crisis? Are we about to see? at the beginning of a breakthrough, or um, Your Highness, are the thing, issues so complicated? We talked about uh, a deep discussion about all the issues. What is the real issues, uh, issue and complicated issue at the heart of this dispute? We would like to uh, find some information. Where is the problem here Where, what, so that we can solve it? Thank you. First of all, I would like to say There is no uh, a problem that cannot be resolved. True, it's complicated. But when we meet at one ta uh, around one table, and now we have a f an affirmation from the country, to which some demands were presented by its uh, brotherly nations in the Gulf region. When we hear that it's ready to discuss all these demands, we are not among those countries, but we are guarantors, and we can guarantee that we will pressure Qatar because it's not in the interest of Qatar to remain outside the flock. Rather, it should join its brothers in the GCC. As you know, thank God, the wisdom of our brothers in the Gulf region, they should appreciate the situation we're in today, the situation in Syria, in Iraq, in, in Syria, and in Libya. Now, is the time that we have to forget all these differences. It's true we have got, we're descended into some not very healthy issues, and especially in the media. But in spite of all of that, we were uh, one of the most people to be affected by this uh, situation by what our brothers in Qatar have done. But uh, when that happened, and before this dispute came into existence, uh, we met with our brothers in Qatar and put an end to this issue. And this is now a normal, a, a normal issue. We met in Riyadh in the presence of President Trump, and there was no one who to say that there was a dispute between between us, but suddenly this dispute came into existence. Thank God now what is important that that we have uh, stopped any military action. And these disputes, as I said, they are uh, uh, complicated and we have seen the media campaign 
uh, that is totally unacceptable to the people because the media coming out of this country are, is against uh, those, the people, not the rulers. And for that reasons, we have received from Qatar a letter in response to the letter I sent them, and they are willing to sit down at the table and discuss all these demands, which the other parties have put down. And we're talking about 13 demands, and I'm certain that all these 13 demands, some of them, uh, a great part of them will be resolved, and the other part, we and perhaps we might not accept them because anything that affects uh, sovereignty, we would not accept. But we are very hopeful. We have great hope in our friends in the U.S. that they will assist them to restore things to where they used to be. Well, that is a problem that we will get resolved. And I'm very, very honored and happy to know that you have problems with the media also. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.